Hello everyone and welcome back to Diablo 3. Since we now saved the Bastion's Keep, it's time to go out on the battlefield and destroy the demon hordes right there. I have secured Bastion's Keep. Now I must go to join the battle in the fields below, where Asmadan's war machines wait. Um, earlier today I finished Act 2 and 3 on a monk, so... No, not Act 2 and 3, Act 3 and 4, sorry about that. I um, as good as they say. have made it this far otherwise. Yep, I am as good as they say and I'm better still. Words cannot describe just how good, good I am. And I'm so modest too. No one's more modest than I am. Thank the God you're here. You've got to destroy those ballistic. They're raining hell down upon us. We can't last much longer. Well, you're gonna have to endure because I'm searching the barracks. And I'm assuming there will be a the tormented stingers may resemble giant scorpions, but in truth, they are molded from the bodies of human sacrifices. The demons twist their victims into the stingers' distinctive forms by slicing open their chests and viciously mutilating their legs. Maddened by pain, these creatures can poison their prey with a single strike. So as interesting as that sounded, let's face it, they're scorpions. Um, they just don't look like something that's been human once and just been twisted a little bit. At least not to my mind, not to my eyes. Okay, more suicidal things. Yep, I'm seeing them, I'm killing them. No questions asked. Let me see if I can. This is the closest zoom effect the game allows and I don't know, that just doesn't look like something made from a human, human um, sacrifice thing. It's just my opinion though. It's nice that the fireballs also jump between uh, different objects. It makes destroying large groups of objects quite easy. Um, my strike is true. They, the, um, the monk also has a very useful ability for that. Um, some sort of whirlwind, which is just a kind of a buff, which basically means that anything close to the monk takes a little bit of damage. Um, and that also works in objects, so you just have to run past something to break it, basically. Um, which is obviously quite useful for breaking large amounts of objects in small amounts of time. Which, in turn, is useful. For getting the um, the bonus experience, as you notice, if you destroy lots of objects in quick succession, you get some bonus experience for that. Um, I guess I'll show you next time I I get that basically. And um, obviously, the more you destroy, the better the bonus experience. So all in all. Um, It's like it's not comparable to destroying a horde of monsters that will give you more experience, but um, it's a nice little bonus, hence the name, of course. Um, and I always like getting it, even though it's, as I said, not that useful. There you go. Destroyed 16 objects, 94 bonus experience. And um, as your level increases, the bonus experience you get for that also increases. Oh dear, more suicidal guys. Your death comes. But um, 
As you can see, with the fire bolts, they are a lot easier to handle. And 11, 14 objects destroyed. I hope I'm not going the right way, though. Sadly, it kind of feels like I am. The problem is you're never quite sure if you have gone the wrong way, so... Or rather, the right way, which is the wrong way. You, you get the point. Um, so... I've had it happen where I thought I was certain that this was the right way, or rather the way to the next level. So I turned all the way back to explore an earlier part, which then turned out to actually have been the correct one, and then I had to backtrack once more. It just wasn't fun. I don't like the frozen thing, it just, um, well, I don't like facing the frozen attribute in here because um, it's difficult to avoid because there's no space. When you're out in the open, on a field for example, it is really easy to avoid so it's quite a nice attribute to get because it just doesn't do very much. So is this the way down? To the next level? I still can't tell. And we have a knockback boss. Well, that's okay. I did not fear pain. side dungeon. And this is, by the way, fully optional, like a complete random find. And considering that, you. it really is quite extensive. Still have found the exit. And another boss, wow. Very nice, very nice. And more intersections, more crossroads. Well, not really crossroads, more like cross corridors, really. Ah, and suicidal guys. The only hardcore character I ever played, I lost to one of those guys, so they do worry me a little bit. I have to say, um, I find the idea of, like, like hardcore characters, that's a good idea, um, and I have on occasion played them, like, I would never play them on video, but I have played them privately on, um, on different games. The fact that these men have held out so long against such deadly foes is a testament to their fortitude. Truly, there are many brave souls guarding these walls. Um, so to my mind, the idea of a hardcore character is that you basically say you're so confident in your skills that you are never going to die playing that character. Um, and it's just basically a test of how 
how good you are at playing the game. Whether you're able to make it through the entire game without dying, the basically. Me. Um, the problem I have with that is just... In an online game, death is not entirely under your control. Um, like, in a single-player offline game, things might happen which cause you to die, which are out of your control, but it's somehow a little bit of a different matter because, I don't know, it just feels like, for example, the doorbell ringing. You could just play at a time where you know, or you, other, you're at least fairly certain no one is going to ping the doorbell. And, of course, most games have the option of pausing. Um, Or, like, your computer crashing, you can't really prevent that at, at, at all times, but, um... In, in a single-player game, I've never noticed... Uh, well, I've never seen an, um, a, an instance where anyone died because their computer crashed. Usually, when you're playing single-player and the computer crashes, you might be losing progress, your, um, your, heart. your save game might get corrupted, that could happen. But um, what I've never seen happen is someone dying because of that in a game. And the problem I'm trying to get at, obviously, is that um, when you're playing an online game like Diablo 3 is, your death might just be completely out of your control. Um, if you die because you got lag spiked, that is, to my mind, nothing you could have done anything about. Um, and it just feels like such a... It, it doesn't only feel like it's not your fault, like the computer crashing, that's an accident which really, unless you've been careless, no one can be blamed for. But certainly you usually couldn't blame it on someone else. Whereas if the server has been giving you a lag spike and that caused you to die, it just somehow feels like that was someone else's fault. But of course you're not getting your hardcore character restored. Because anyone can claim there's been a lag spike and it's impossible to check. So they, they can restore characters just because someone said they were lag spiked, even if, if it, even if it might be true, um, just because they can't check it. Wow, look at this. And I still haven't found the exit. And this is level 1, so there has to be a level 2. Massive. Um, so the one solution to that I've seen in a game called Path of Exile, which, by the way, is... Um, is a very cool game, and it's entirely free, so... Um, I'm not entirely convinced I um well I'm not entirely convinced of the game yet I it has some some aspects which I'm not that fond of but a lot of things about it are really cool the point is I can wholeheartedly suggest you download and try out that game because it's entirely free so um at best you lose time <laughs> if you don't like it you can uninstall it and you haven't paid a cent for it so that's cool anyway um they the way they do the hardcore thing is if you die as a hardcore character you you don't get the character deleted he just gets restored as a standard character Your so undoes you. um they're not going to make him back into a hardcore character even if you died from a lag spike because as i said before they have no way to check that but um you don't lose the entire character you don't lose all the items you found you just can't use them on another hardcore character and um My curse upon you. Like just like in Diablo 3 for example, all the trading and stuff is separated between the leagues, so if you found an item in, in the standard league, you cannot get that into hardcore ever. Um which means it's still quite bad to lose your hardcore character because um he's now in a place where for example certain items are just not as valuable. Um Obviously, because if any hardcore character that dies becomes standard character, um, it means 
that eventually items get lost from hardcore and they will be moved to the standard league. Whereas there's no items moving from standard to hardcore. I'm not talking about hacked items and stuff like that, of course. But yeah, that's um that's a very cool solution to that problem I found. Like I find that to be a good solution. I didn't find the solution. Um because it's still a ma major pain if you lose your hardcore character, but he's not completely gone. You can still play the character. He's just it just doesn't say hardcore anymore. It says standard now and all the humiliation that comes with it. My friend was patrolling the depths before the breach. He's still alive down here. I know it. Please help me. Find the missing guard of the keep. I don't think that's going to work out, to be honest. But let's see. And actually, let's check out those pets. Pointless. Let's hope level 2 is not quite as large as level 1, because that was a massive dungeon. By the laws of heaven. Huh. Bastion's keep was a magnificent fortress once. <laughs> How could it have fallen in such a way? Even the mightiest of stones cannot stand against such destruction. Oh no, 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 don't blow up, please. Nice. As I said, they are quite easy to avoid if you have some way of um, dealing the necessary damage quickly enough. So that's fine. And I think I saw the resplendent chest the just now. You. At least I saw a resplendent chest. Which, as I said, there's always going to be one on multi level dungeons. Well, on two level dungeons, there's always going to be a resplendent chest on the second level. Um, doesn't obviously um, work for like stuff like the cathedral, because that's a story dungeon, has multiple levels, but more than two. Um, I think you know what I mean. Frenzy Shrine, why hey, nice damage boost. That was a minion, which means there's a boss nearby. What's he do? Oh, he's a jailer. That's not too bad. Yep. It's slightly annoying, but um, really, jailer becomes really bad when the bosses have more than one ability, because jailer itself it just locks you in place, which, eh, it's not that bad. Um. It starts becoming really bad when you need to have a mobility to evade certain area of attack damage, damage things, area of effect damage things. You know what? I comes. And I just picked up a white item, didn't I? Yep. Um, for example, when the enemies can um, can also turn the ground into poison, like the plague or the desecrator. Um, effects which basically make it very bad to stand in a single there spot. Or mostly, uh, it, uh, what I s think is the worst was actually um, it's Arcane Enchanted. Um, that's a particularly nasty one if you're locked in, in, in a single place that can do insane amounts of damage, basically. A worthy opponent! Okay, so... He's alive! Praise Akarat! I knew you would come back for me. Thank you, stranger. His family would never forgive me if I came back home without him. We've actually saved someone. He didn't die later on. Why? <laughs> they just disappeared. <sighs> well, I feel better now. I saved someone. And... 
think this is this level almost done, but there's a little bit left. Set of crates and possibly a room back here. Yep. Oh, the fire bombs. Anyway, that was a massive side dungeon with a nice little quest inside. Um, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.